Hi, I'm Karen Antonini, and welcome to Town Dish. Today, I'm making a lemon pasta and roasted broccoli. We'll be visiting the New Canaan Fire Department, Chief Hennessy, and some firefighters to learn more about what they do. So to get started, I'm gonna make the lemon pasta. I need a pound of pasta, some lemons, garlic, butter, salt and pepper, olive oil, and Parmesan. This is a super easy dish and just really tasty. So I'm going to start by having my pot of water come to a rolling boil, and I'm gonna add plenty of salt. You want the pot to be salty like the sea. So I've added my salt, and we'll then add my pasta and cook it according to package instructions for about 10 to 11 minutes. So I'm gonna add that in there. The beauty of this dish is that it doesn't take very long and it's a great lunch or weeknight meal. And we're very grateful to Walter Stewart's Market for being our food sponsor. All this delicious food you see here today was provided by them. So I'm gonna leave my pasta. And then while that's boiling, while that's cooking for about the 10 to 11 minutes, I am gonna go ahead and add my three tablespoons of butter and add it right into my pan. Let's get that going. And keep it at a low to medium heat so you don't burn the butter or the garlic, which we're gonna add next. Get that going right in there. Turn it up a little bit. And then go ahead and add that, I have my minced garlic. I've already minced it, but definitely use fresh garlic. I'm gonna put that right in there. And just let that garlic cook until it's like a light golden color. No more than that, or you'll have a burned garlic taste. So while that is cooking, I'm going to make my lemon parmesan mixture. So there, that's at a good temperature. And so I have a half a cup of olive oil. I've already poured that into here. And then I will, bring, I will have two lemons, the juice of two lemons, and then the zest of one lemon right here. So I'm gonna add the lemon juice directly into this measuring cup. This is the other thing I love about this dish is it's all right in a measuring cup in just one pan. And then I'm going to add my lemon zest. See the lemon zest, to use your zester. Add that right in there and a half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper and some salt. And then I have grated my fresh Parmesan cheese. Definitely always make sure to use real authentic Parmesan cheese. The flavor is incredible. You definitely need that. So I have about two thirds cup of Parmesan. You can grate a little more, a little extra when you go to serve this. And this is all you need to make this fantastic sauce that will go right over the pasta at the very end. Okay, so I am going to check my pasta. It should be al dente. I think it is ready to go. Yes, that feels ready. So I am going to strain the pasta. Holy moly, it's hot. Then I'm going to take the pasta and place it directly in this pan. So this is the pan with the garlic and the butter, and I'm gonna give it a really good stir. This is also just gonna reheat the pasta a little bit. And once you've coated the pasta with the garlic butter sauce, I'm simply gonna add in this lemon mixture. So just make sure it's all blended. The nice thing is the pan is still a little hot, so the Parmesan will blend really nicely here. Okay, and you can use your pasta fork, maybe a little bit easier. 
And with this dish, you can cut up some little lemon slices. I have some here on a plate. So when you go to plate it, you can add lemon slices if you wish to make it a little more special. And we have this incredible pasta, which we will go serve to the firefighters. And alongside the pasta, I have made some roasted broccoli, which really complements this pasta really nicely. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So I've made this broccoli. You can either buy a head of broccoli and just chop it up, or for a little quicker process, buy the broccoli already cut up into florets. And then put it in a large bowl, sprinkle, drizzle with some olive oil, add a little lemon juice, salt and pepper, and at the very end, just add some uh, grated Parmesan cheese. So it would give a little extra flavor and it complements the pasta, like I said. So this is a super simple recipe and very easy for a lunch or weeknight meal. So now we're gonna wrap all this up and head over to the New Canaan Fire Department. I'm so excited to meet everyone and hear some of their stories. Generous. Appreciate well, it. Great, we great. appreciate, I know, I'm sure I can speak for the town of New Canaan and for your commitment and everything that you all do here. So this is the least we can do and really just to get to know you guys better and, and understand what you do here. And, and I'm really curious if anyone ever slides down the pole. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yep. You do? Yes. I still okay. use it once in a while. Not as much now as I got a little older. But when I was younger, I used it all the time. Um, sometimes it's just faster. It's just like boom, you're down here like that. You're going pretty fast by the time you hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some, there are guys here that use it. I once in a while I'll use it, but I and not as much as I used to. It's just a neat thing to have too. Well, the old truck, when the small truck was yeah. used to, used to yeah. slide down, you would squeeze, stop, and jump on the truck. Yeah. Wow. But now the trucks, you know, we don't ride the back step anymore. Mm -hmm. The jump suits are sealed closed. We used to, you know, it was open cabs. You know, but those days are gone. It was a lot of fun <laughs> riding on the back of the truck, I mean, especially on a nice warm summer night. You know, a bunch of young guys going downtown, New Canaan. They had all the restaurants and bars down there and all the girls outside yelling at you as you're going by in the fire truck. It was awesome. You know, you just, you're on top of the world, you know. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you're sleeping together, you're eating together, you're riding the back step. That's what it was, you know. We still haven't grown up. We still, I mean, we, we still have fire trucks we play with. <laughs> yeah, like We're growing old, but not up. Yeah, growing old, but not up. So, it's good. so what does that look like? When the call comes in, what, to, I'm sure everyone has a different answer, but what is the first thing that goes through your mind or your heart rate, I'm sure, goes up? What happens? You're going to run scenarios through your head as you're going. Um, what it might possibly be. And time, the, you know, two o'clock in the morning, you're gonna have a different, you know, outlook on what it might be. Um, six o'clock at night, you're gonna, you know, if alarm goes off, you may think it's just burnt food or something like that. Two o'clock in the morning is gonna give you a different thing. It comes in as a motor vehicle accident. At two o'clock in the morning, it's also gonna paint another picture. So it's, you know, you're pretty much read what's coming in. You're listening to the dispatcher. You're listening to his voice and his tone. Because if you just received a phone call from, you know, police department stating something, <clears throat> and then we'll monitor the radio while we're en route, and we'll get, you know, feedback from if somebody else has already showed up there, starting to do a size up, and you just, you're literally running scenarios through your head as you're going there, what you have, communicate with the guys in the back, if you listen, you know, we'll grab the first thing bag, grab the can, whatever, to, you know, to process what you're going to do. It's, you know, and it's second nature for a lot of us. I mean, I've been here over 40 years, and, you know, so it's a lot. Also, when you every guy has a specific role. So as a first due operator, you really have to know, hey, where are we going? Uh, you have to know the address, uh, know where your fire hydrants are, um, and 
the second do operator, same thing. Pretty much, he's got to know, you know, what, you know, where he's going, and and uh, uh, you know, also with uh, if he's water source or depending upon what the call is. Then also now you have guys that are riding in the back of the fire engine. They're they're getting ready, so they're putting their air packs on. So um, pretty much everyone has their designated jobs and. Whatever role that you're playing that night mm -hmm. is is what you really have to uh, gear yourself up. Whether it's a house fire or whether it's a motor vehicle accident. I've been on accidents with Mike and he would start giving you instructions from the front. This is what I want and when we get there, try to come up with a plan. So um, pretty much it's it's just uh, everyone knowing their jobs and uh, when when uh, the emergency kicks in, you, you got to know what you're doing. Everybody has their own little specialties, you know. We have, I mean, I've got an electrician, my lieutenant's an electrician. So we got an electrical, you know, electrical call. I'm gonna pull him and say, you know what, <clears throat> you know, go inside. Or if I have a question about something, I'm gonna bounce it off him. We, everybody has their own little gift. And you know, and that's your resources that you use to, you know, to get the job done. So how many typically will go on a call? Or how many, how many are here on a shift? Six, on any given all shift? the time, and six guys roll out. Um, and it's up to the captain to call a judgment call. He may say that, you know what, it's just uh, someone's having a problem with an alarm system, whatever else, we're just going to do a one engine response. So the first do will go out, which will be four guys, and sometimes we may send the second do if it's a really a nothing, just to change a battery or something like that, a good and welfare check, we'll, second do will go, which is two people. And so then in terms of volunteers or, or calling in backup, is that, does that happen a lot? If they're or? here and there's room on the rig, they're going to roll with us. Um, and sometimes they will, you know, they'll man their own piece. Excuse me, there's pieces of apparatus upstairs that, you know, we don't have the full-time crew that's not there to operate it. So the volunteers will come in and they'll take that second or third due piece that's going to be needed. If we're out on the first call, they may take the, the second call and make the run. Because there's times we, you know, we're going on multiple calls and, you know, all of a sudden you get two and three calls. We can only handle one. Well, you know, if it's a nothing call, the first one, we'll split off the second due piece to go there. Somebody, if there's some volunteers hanging around, they'll take another engine over to that second call, you know, to, you know, to cover it to see what we have. So, you know, it's, it's communications, everything's running through your head, and you're just trying to, you know, lay it all out in a, a positive way that's going to work. And every scenario is different. So, you know, you just, you got you to gotta think, talk, and walk, and which is different than this department than a lot of departments is, you know, there's some of the bigger departments will have an engine company, a truck company, a rescue company. Here we do it all at once. So whatever crew is on, everybody pretty much is designated to do everything. And so how many career firefighters versus volunteers, is that what you call We have career? about 24 career members and okay. about 35 volunteers. Mm -hmm. All the volunteers carry pagers like this, and if, every time we have a call, their pager goes off, tells them where the call is, and if they're available, they would respond either to the firehouse to take a truck, or they would go to the scene and help out at, at the incident. That's kind of how it works. We notify them for just about all the calls except for maybe smoke detector change on send or CO calls or something like that that is not very manpower intensive. We really need them when we have you know a fire, a significant fire, because with a six-man crew we can get started, but we really can't get a lot of work done. We will call in mutual aid from Norwalk or Wilton or Westchester County or Stanford to help out on uh, when we have a significant call. We can handle the day-to-day -day things, but when we have something really uh, large, we always have to call the neighbors for help. And we help them out, too. They call us also, so it goes both ways. Okay, and the training is the same, whether it's for volunteers or career firefighters, yes. it's all the same? They're all trained. They all have the same opportunity to train. They all have the same equipment issued to them. Um, Career members usually have more training because they have more hours available to do it. They can do it while they're working. They can do it. They have more free time. Um, almost all of our volunteers have full-time jobs and families, which really limits the amount of time that they can contribute to the town. But um, we're, we're in pretty good shape. They, they, they stand up and do what they need to do. And how many hours is the training? I was lucky enough to be able to kind of... It's hundreds of hours, depending on how far you want to go. Before you can ride out on the truck, um, Maybe Jack can explain how much training have you had since you joined the department? So we have monthly proby drills. There's also a lot more training opportunities if you just swing by the firehouse. Um, all the career guys are super friendly and they're always willing to, you know, show you the ropes and, and teach you something that, you know, you might not have known because there's, there's a lot of stuff to learn here and there's a lot of uh, information to process and learn. So 
and you're in school. I am, right? yeah. So I'm actually on my internship right now, so I don't have school. Um, so I'm here 7 to 12 every day. And, uh, yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> what I love What compelled it. you to get into this, to becoming a firefighter? So I saw an ad in the paper. Um, Russ Kimes with an ad in the paper. I knew Russ uh, through Boy Scouts, through my Eagle Scout project, and I knew who was the assistant chief, and, and he sort of convinced me to, you know, give it a shot, because why not? And um, I did, and, you know, I love it. So. Still here. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to stick around. That's great. How do you get volunteers? How do they normally get more volunteers? Or Word of mouth. We do yeah. um, recruitment and retention activities. They, um, COVID has really slowed down the amount of recruitment we could do because we couldn't have anybody in the building. We had to isolate and everybody was wearing masks and it was very uh, hard to get and retain volunteers for a while. Um, we were restricting access to the building to just about everybody so um, it made it very difficult. But it, things are starting to pick up again. Anybody that's interested in volunteering that lives around New Canaan is welcome to come in and get an application and find out what their training requirements are, what we expect from our new volunteers to come in and uh, learn the trade and uh, how much activity is expected of them and uh, what, you know, what they can expect to do. Um, it's a great, it's the greatest job in the world. I've been doing it a very long time. Um, most of the guys here have been doing it for a very long time and there's no profession in the world, in my opinion, that's better than this. It's great. Amazing. So what is a typical day, if you're here for 24 hours or so, tell me about the rest of the building. I got a great tour from the chief, <laughs> but I'd love to hear what, what you all do. Uh, we do our truck checks, make sure that the apparatus is in good working order. We check the fluids, equipment, general condition of the truck, and um, things of that sort. Make sure our equipment is all up to uh, speed, you know, our air packs are uh, there's no concerns or issues with those. And, uh, you know, the, the, the chores sh uh, rotate uh, throughout the week. So, uh, you know, one truck gets checked on one day, another truck the next, and, you know, chores get done on a daily basis. We have, you know, different things, house chores that need to be done, you know, clean, downstairs, upstairs, you know. A little housekeeping is always nice. I'm impressed. The kitchen and was, then, uh, was immaculate. You know, <laughs> we'll Very impressed. Yeah, we'll and at some point during that time, we'll answer calls. You know, and, the, and the call volume <laughs> changes. <laughs> there could be days where we have you know, several calls. There could be days where we have three calls. There's could day we have zero calls. So, uh, you know, at that point, we fill our days in with, uh, you know, training assignments, monthly training drills. Uh, weekly training drills just to kind of shore up our, um, you know, our skills. And, you know, it's a perishable skill. We need to stay on top of the things that we've learned over the years and keep practicing them so we become, you know, stay efficient. Keep sharp. There's yeah. a study room upstairs, right? Yes, there a is. Study room and what a, a gym? Which looks yeah, we have a nice gym facility. Amazing. You know, the kitchen which we've already experienced, <laughs> and uh, you know, day goes by pretty quick. You stay so, busy. That's, uh, it, you sound very busy, but do you have any downtime and do, can you guys do anything no, else? No, we're other going than, uh, all really out 24 7. <laughs> <laughs> non stop. <laughs> <laughs> there is downtime. Yeah. You know, when we're not answering calls, so, we finish our chores, yeah. we finish our studies, our training. There's downtime. And there's another interesting tradition that um, the guys have, depending on uh, the, the holiday, but a lot of guys will have Sunday dinner with their families. We, we have a very large table here, and they will invite their families, wives and children, to come and share dinner with them on Sunday night, which has always been a hit, particularly during the holidays. Like if you have to work Thanksgiving or Christmas, sometimes you'll come in here and the place will be full of families because the guys have to work and the families get to come by. It's a, it's a, it's, I think it's a huge tradition in the fire service. You look at any TV show, you, everybody's cooking, everybody's melding, and that's when everything gets put aside and you sit down and you have a nice meal and uh, you go on. So it's a special, special place down here. But the, you know, the kitchen is special. I mean, the, the building, to me, the building is special. I grew up in town, been coming up here since I was a little kid and just, you know, I'm, it's a neat place. It's, you know, I'm happy Your dad was a member? Yeah, he was. He got in 1952 and he was a captain for a while. He was part of our family forever. Yeah. Mike's, Mike's yeah. dad was a member? 
Yeah. David's got family. Yep. My dad and uncle remembers. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of family history, generation after generation, yeah. in New Canaan. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you marry somebody who's you know, it's in their family. It makes it a lot easier for us. Sure. And yeah, for me, it's made it super easy. My, graf my wife's grandfather was a captain in New Rochelle. Her dad was a chief. <laughs> and you have other, there are other activities you do besides firefighting periodically throughout the year, correct? Yes. Within the community? We do fire prevention, you know. So um, we'll go to all the schools and educate the children um, on fire safety, you know. So very, very important. And... Um, uh, as a matter of fact, we did one this morning. Um, they were not able to t schedule one during uh, the fall, so they requested if we would come out and, and uh, make it up, and we did. So we took the ladder truck, and you know, as long as the kids understand the basics of you know what to do, it, it's it's really important, you know. So it's just a, a matter of uh, you know makes our job easier knowing that everyone's out of the house and the kids are, are educated in this. Um, the fire marshal's office is more than happy to come out and help anybody um, have a fire safety plan for their house. Um, he does articles in the paper all the time. One of the recent ones was called EDITH. Uh, it's an acronym for Exit Drills in the Home. And it basically tells people how to make sure that children know how to exit home safely. On, Recently, there was a, uh, an intrusion alarm that went, or a fire alarm that went off in somebody's home, and they also have an intruder alarm. Well, the children were taught when the intruder alarm goes off to go hide. Well, it was a fire alarm, and they hid. And that's something that we have to make sure that families know that uh, children should be able to recognize the difference between a fire alarm and an intrusion alarm, the burglar alarm. So when the fire alarm goes off, you leave the house. And unfortunately, they hid. There was no fire, but if there was, it could have been tragic. So we, and we find out about these things, we try and drill for them. <clears throat> the fire marshal will uh, look to make sure you have uh, proper smoke detectors. Um, he doesn't have jurisdiction in single family homes, but if he's invited in, he would be more than happy to do so. And the fire department also provides uh, smoke detectors and carbon dioxide detectors for people in home at, in New Canaan. And for people that can't uh, change their own batteries, we'll even change the batteries for them because a smoke detector is, is, is the best way to, to keep your family safe. And we do everything we can to protect everybody that lives and works in the town of New Canaan. Um, and as far as education goes, um, I took it when I was a small child from the fireman that came and visited. And um, I remembered a lot of stuff and they kind of hooked me and I'm, I'm still here. And um, the stuff that the guys are telling kids in school today it's the same thing. They, uh, some kids are very fascinated and they'll ask a thousand questions and um, they really retain the information when they're very young. Uh, they're really interested. As the kids get older, they're less interested, but uh, that's why we get into all the schools and preschools when they're very young and they, the kids really enjoy it and they get a lot out of it. They take in a lot at that age. They do. So it's they great do. that you are doing that for the community. I had a really cool experience a while ago where I went used to do them when I, I used to do the fire prevention talks. Now the younger guys do it, as always the younger guys did it. And I went to a fire alarm at Sachs Middle School, and some girl walks by, Fireman Mike! <laughs> and I'm like, was, I talked to her when she was in kindergarten, and at her class about fire safety, and she remembered who I was, and I thought that was really cool. So I'm like, good, somebody learned something from me. Yes. You know, so like you remember what I taught you, <laughs> you know so like, <laughs> it's just I thought that was kind of neat that this this kid remembered me all the way in the middle school just you know what's really neat. nice too is is where our station is is uh, centrally located in town we have a lot of foot traffic that goes mm -hmm. by all night I mean all day and especially in the evening hours families are, are going to dinner and stuff and they have their little children and stuff we'll give them fire hats coloring books let them sit in a truck. It's, it's a great photo op. It, it's just, it's being part of the, you know, the community. And so, like Michael said, you still get children that come back that you've taught yeah. stuff to them and they're like, oh, I remember. And some of them are like really knowledgeable and they're very, very impressive. So um, just where this firehouse is located and uh, just the, the sense of community with, with uh, the children and also um, the adults have a lot of questions also. And uh, they're like, oh, wow, I never knew that. So we're there to, to answer their questions. And, and the primary thing is with the fire service and with anything is, is education. 
Jay Latissimo has very generously given us some gelato for today. So I think we have strawberry, coffee, chocolate, and stracciatella, little cookies and cream. It must be so rewarding to to be able to help people. And I mean, you're seeing them on their kind of at their worst moments, of course, when you yeah. when you have when you have a call. I guess you know, living here, you know, being born here, living here. It has its pluses. And now then your kids are going to school here, and you're in the fire service or you're a police, you know, policeman in town or EMS, whatever, you're, you know, you're kicking back to the communities, and you go on these MVAs or you go to these houses, and you know, it's their friends. So it's, it, it gives you a little bit of a different look at a lot of it. You, know, you see their parents coming over to you. you know, they're looking for some type of secure feeling. Um, you know, it can hit home, which it does. You get, you take it personal, uh -huh. and you want to, you want to, you, you know, you want to save as much as you can for them, you know, because it's their home, and you try and respect that, you know, it's their home, and and you know, you see, you go into a room and there's a, a teddy bear on the ground, a kid's teddy bear, a kid loved that bear, now it's all dirty and smoky, and you know, it's like that's somebody's toy, you know, that's somebody's photograph of their grandparents' wedding and whatever that's you know just really want to try and minimize the damage and just just put the thing out put the fire out problems go away <laughs> so I the motor yeah. vehicle i think is the hardest thing. oh gosh Far because you know that's where you know it's the other end you know mm -hmm. whether it's a fatality and a friend and stuff like that that's where it's it, it'll get tough and you know and that's where you know, we always say we have each other. We bounce off of you know each other and stuff like that. And there's other counseling and stuff you can do. But I think the relationship that we have between each other it definitely works. You got to get it out, discuss it. It's going to hit home all the time. You're going to have you know your feelings are going to be about it the whole nine yards, which is normal. And if you don't have those feelings, then you're not human. So you know, and that's what makes you, I think, a better fireman. Everybody has a way of dealing with things, you know, some through, you know, just different avenues. Um, so, you know, best case scenario is when the most self, I mean, the most gratifying thing is when everyone's safe, everyone's okay, and they're going to the hospital for treatment, and then, you know, it, it's a great, great feeling for us because you know, we responded, we did something great, we helped them out, you know, and we got them out of a bad situation. So on the flip side is, you know, uh, fatalities and death and stuff. And uh, so we, like I said earlier, we, we handle it in our own ways and stuff, and it brings us together. And, um, uh, and it comes down to our training also. And were any of you involved with 9-11? Excuse me, I went down, um, spent quite a few days there working on ground, you know, on the pile. Um, it was a different day, it really was, but I will say when, I, when we first left here, I thought it was going to hell, but getting there and seeing just everybody, you know, the involvement of the, the citizens, you know, everybody there, the residents of everything, giving and helping and stuff like that, it definitely changed it. Um, it really took the, a, something you don't know what you're going into. Uh, and, and kind of put a little bit more of, wow, you know, America is a great place. It really is. Uh, you know, we, we left out of John Raitt, who's um, swapped with him today. Him and I, we flew down in choppers out of Sikorsky there. And, you know, it was, you know, you're, you're going into a place you have no idea what to expect. Um, but you know what? I will say, you know, we, I spent well, probably 18 days there working. And I, I will say it was, you know, there were some bad days, some good days. But overall, um, if it was to happen, God forbid, you know, it never happens again. But, you know, you had a fire department that is just resourced above and beyond. I just had to ask my uh, comrade here for permission. We both went down to <laughs> And uh, we're kind of quiet about it. Yeah, and we're we don't kinda... talk much about it. We just keep it, be, you know. Well, we went down on September 14th yep. and we went down, took a train down. And um, with every intention of just maybe backfilling the station or something. Yeah. Was, and we went, we went to work. They put us to work down there. We were there. invited, actually, with uh, Bridgeport yeah, Fire. Some, yeah, some guys and, from Bridgeport. Uh, Bridgeport called us up, a friend of mm -hmm. mine, and, and Mike overheard me talking to the chief and kind of like, where are you going? 
Yeah. Said, uh, go down to the city. He's like, you ain't going by yourself. I'm going yeah, with you. I'm going with you. So, <laughs> and, uh, but it was pretty ironic going down on the train. I mean, you're seeing um, steel workers with yeah. K-12 big saws. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you the train was not loaded with people with suits and families going to yeah. the city for a, a day of joy. It was people with construction workers. workers. It was just Fire, firefighters. It was, yeah, Unreal, yeah. you know. So it's like people. I mean, yeah, just yeah, coming together. yeah. Not just firemen. It was just whoever. Guys, guys getting on hands. A, uh, get, guys getting on a train with construction tools. Yeah. Power saws, things like that. You know, hard hats. They're ready to work. It's like, all right, we're gonna get this done. We put in a good what twelve hour day. Yeah. And we're exhausted. <clears throat> and we just we we're getting ready to walk back to Grand Central, and the cops saw us, and they picked us up and put us in a van. Yeah. And we, uh, no handcuffs. Crashed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, uh, <laughs> brought us. I remember we were driving up Sixth Avenue, and um, in the police van, and people, and people were people. cheering, yeah. and I just, I started to well up. I was like, wow. I was like, this is a good country, you know. It people was appreciate, and I and I, and we're from out of town. Anybody, I don't know. Well, just think of the guys that had to do that every day. Go down there, work that pile, breathe in God knows what, and uh, you know now they're they're sick and dying from it even today, and they're, you know they had to do that every day. They're looking for their friends. Some of them are looking for their sons. Some of them are looking for their fathers. You know, so it's like, I, my hats off to them. It's a great fire department down there. I learned a lot from guys from down there that work there. They come up to Connecticut and train us. So it was just nice to be able to give something back to them. I, I hope whatever little bit we did. So I know that you have a memorial to 9-11 outside. How did that come about? And we have just to give Mike. credit to Mike. Mike did a fantastic job. He's responsible oh, for that memorial entire out memorial out front. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, he went above and beyond. and. Uh, you know, us guys chipped in a little bit here and there, but he, he's the ringleader with it. And his vision and his thought behind it is just screams passion of exactly. Um, never the, forget. The yeah. Never forget. Yeah. And the piece of World yeah. Trade Center steel Chief Hennessy procured, yeah. too. So that it's nice to have that. Because I look at it all the time. Every morning I look at that. It reminds me of what I do. Is there anything that you would like the community to know I love that I grew up here. I love that I work here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, the people are so nice in town. They really are. I'm glad to be one of their firefighters. We appreciate so much what all of you do. Everyone here, everyone, volunteers and, and career firefighters here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Is there anything you'd like to tell the community you'd like them to know? Um, we're just very concerned about everybody's safety. We think that fire, uh, smoke detectors and CO detectors are very important. They're available at the firehouse if you call. Um, if there's anything we can do to um, help you become safe in your house, you can call the fire marshal's office and schedule a fire safety tour. We can come out and look at your house and say that uh, maybe you should do this or do that. Uh, the fire marshal writes articles in their paper all the time with little hints about barbecuing and going to college and fire safety and fireplace safety and barbecue safety and uh, things like that. It's just that uh, a fire that doesn't happen is an emergency we don't have to respond to. How would you describe your team of people who are here working with you? Motivated, happy to be here. Volunteers want to give back to the community. They come in here and do hundreds of hours of training and work for no pay. Most people don't even know who they are when we show up at a fire call. They all are dressed exactly the same. They can't tell a volunteer from a career firefighter. Um, they want to be here and, and help out and they're doing it for no pay. The career members are fortunate enough to be able to get, make a career out of it and support their families. And it's kind of like, as you've probably heard before, that's like winning the lottery when you get a job in the fire department because it's something that you're very passionate about and they're actually paying you enough money that you can support a family on it and it's uh it's it's wonderful it's just a great group of men and women that are here and uh we're very fortunate to have all of them i agree i see them as i walk by or, or driving by and they're so friendly we're 
we're really fortunate. Sure, they're very, very happy to be here. They all, they all love their jobs. Uh, a lot of people can't say they love their job, but I would say everybody here does, That's so including great. me. Thank you again, Chief. You're welcome. So what a fun afternoon at New Canaan Fire Department. You too can make this delicious lemon pasta and roasted broccoli. And again, we just want to thank Walter Stewart's Market for being our food sponsor and Jay Latissimo for providing the delicious gelato for today's luncheon. Be sure to tune in again as we visit more first responders in New Canaan and I'll be preparing more dishes that you can make at home. I'm Karen Antonini and this is Town Dish. <laughs>